Let's get started. When your clay is wet and slippery, remove your hand and increase the speed. My wheel is going full speed when I do this next maneuver. I'm making the line from seven to one to line up where I'm going to push with my left hand. I want to go right across the middle of the clay from seven toward one. I use my left hip or thigh to push my elbow and the heel of my left hand so it hits right at seven o'clock and goes toward one. Push it gently forward until you feel the clay hit what we sometimes call a sweet spot or snapping to center. Sometimes it causes clay to squish out to the side. I usually remove that and add a little more slip. Once my clay is slippery, I can then start to push. Never push until the clay is moving quickly. Squeeze back toward your left hand, which you're holding still, and tilt your hands inward until your clay turns into an upside down ice cream cone. We call this process coning up. Gently tilt the left thumb forward, but not the actual thumb, the muscle below it. Slowly rock it back and it should be going back toward a bell shape. Let the heels of your left and right hand tuck in at the bottom so the clay doesn't squish out. You should end up having a Liberty Bell rather than a library bell shape. Potters do this several times. It's not because we're superstitious. It's because it takes several times to squeeze the clay up and down to make it tighter and closer together and all spinning around in the same direction. See how I tip my hand forward and slowly rock the muscle behind my thumb back. When I hit the ground, I use the heels of my hands to keep it from squirting outward. Always apply more slip between lifts. After you do it a few times, it gets a little easier because the clay is more centered. It's not about a lot of hard pressure and pressing harder and harder. It's using just the right amount of pressure and slowly change the angle at which you apply it. Sometimes I use a technique called the goal post. It's the same technique we just did, but we're using the fingers as a hinge. It helps to squeeze your heels of your hands and cross your thumbs over and tilt your fingers or the goal post upward. It has the same effect of making a cone. You can use the tips of your fingers and hold the goal post slightly angled until it rocks back down and you reestablish your goal post. Again, gently tipping in at the edges of the heels of your hands to keep the clay from squirting outward. On to the next step, 